Page episode number next. I'm Matt. I'm Andy. Welcome to the show. <laughs> if you don't know, we got a special guest with us tonight. This is Andy from Andy Bird Builds. He has a YouTube channel, which I've linked in the description below. You can go check out for yourself. He does a lot of content on CNC's, and uh, he was down helping me out with a project today from Kentucky. Yes. All the way eight and a half, eight and a half hour drive uh, to come down and help me out. So I really appreciate his work. We're going to show you our sawdust spotlight tonight, and this is, comes from our Facebook community. Uh, Michael Elliott gets this week's Facebook uh, or for the sawdust spotlight. See this here. Check this out. Did a fantastic job. That is really, really cool. Y'all can see my email popping through. <laughs> Why is it so loud? It always does that. Good job. That was a good job. That was a really good project. This looks like a wine type holder. Yeah. Type thing. Yeah. This is a lot of a lot of detail and a lot of work there that you wouldn't just looking at it, you may not think, man, that's a lot of work, but that's a lot of work. So tonight's topic is we don't have email call. So tonight's topic is uh why I think it's important to work together. Mm. A friend of mine kind of um photobombed the uh thumbnail so it says slash working with a legend. Um if you'll hit that button. And then you should see this right there. Yep. That way you can check out the comments as it comes through. There we go. Uh, so that uh, that's the uh, premise of the show. And so uh, what happened? What happened was uh, me and Andy had this plan for quite a while now. We've been trying to get get in touch with you other, but or get you know connected up. The schedules didn't mesh up till today. Uh, this last weekend, I flew down to Dallas, Texas, and spent the weekend with a good friend. Mr. Jeff Allred, and then we uh, we started a project together, and uh, oh yeah, you gotta drop the states wherever you're from. But my wife is sitting right there telling me drop the states, drop the states. So let us know where you're from. So we flew down to um, Dallas, Texas, and I, me and Jeff started a project together. It's really cool working with somebody because typically we're in our own little caves and we're, we're doing our own little thing, and we don't actually work with anybody. But seeing other people's tools, their processes, how they use their tools, and how they how they work in their shop, and and all how that stuff works, like I, I brought back a lot of inspiration from how he's got stuff going, and I really liked how he worked, and so it had me thinking, like working together for you know what I mean. So you're you're, you're learning from each other, and then today uh, Andy come down and we we filmed a video for his channel, and then we started working on one for my channel that'll probably be out in a few weeks. And I needed help with a, a part of the project has a CNC involved where we're, we're engraving something and we're also cutting the thing out and making pockets for epoxy pours and different things. I was like, this is the man. Cause he was like, <laughs> he was going to town on that CNC uh, software. So that's just like, he was, he done, we was talking about how to, I said, man, I wish there was a way to replicate that so that I don't have to continually program the, tool pass he's like what are you talking about i was like <laughs> the whole project we've just finished couldn't we replicate i would love to replicate that so that i can make two of those at one time instead of just one he's like all you gotta do is this and it was like oh, press what? of a button yeah one button and this whole time <laughs> i've been trying to duplicate it out so like stuff like that i think is really really cool to learn because like otherwise i wouldn't have probably wouldn't have stumbled across that for months you know yeah and it's really interesting to see how you work and obviously you haven't had the luxury to come to my shop, but yeah. you are always welcome. Thank you. And, uh, but yeah, just to see your workflow and see, uh, how you do things. Uh, iron, like we said this morning, iron sharpens iron. Yep. That's so. right. It's really cool to be able to kind of work together like that. Yeah. Y'all can take a field trip 731 anytime you want to, Miss Debbie. You're more than welcome to come here. Stephanie? Yeah. She said, yeah. field trip 731. <laughs> So uh, we went down to Woodcraft this last weekend. A friend of mine, Jeff, was uh, he went by and set it all up. I didn't do anything. So he, he went by and asked him if I could come by and make a video. Uh, not sponsored, just want to come in and, and just shoot some video of my first experience in Woodcraft. So we was able to do that. And uh, at first they were kind of, yeah, maybe, I don't know, I pass it by the boss. And they approved it, and then we was able to go. But it turned out to be really cool because – they had a class in session starting at uh, 10 a.m. We got there at 9, so I got to meet the instructor 
And then he told me what the project was. And then I got to interview him or put, get him on camera. He agreed to get on camera and show me around their shop that they have inside Woodcraft. I didn't know they had a shop inside Woodcraft. So that's basically a mini shop tour inside the Woodcraft store. And then also what kind of classes they offered. And, and then we went to Jeff's house and started working on that project. And uh, he has a really cool setup. He's in a three car garage and it's like, just to, just working together is like just the simple fact of I could hold something while he was cutting it and not have to worry about it falling to the floor. You know what I mean? Like if you're working by yourself, you know, you got to get that thing, you know, braced up or, or figure out fall. something another way or let it fall, <laughs> you know, yeah. or, you know, all oh, the tape measures out of my reach. And then there it is. You know, he hands it to you. Like just yeah. little stuff like that. Like it's really cool. Yeah. Chris, uh, Genesis says uh, he's new to woodworking and hope to learn and grow. Man, you'll learn and grow. Sure will. Gary Mays <laughs> wants to know what is a good beginner router table? A good beginner router table. Do you have a, a, a small router table? I do. I have the Craig router table. Is that a good one? I like it. Like the whole table and all? The whole table, it? lift. Um, I have the Craig lift. It's a good lift. Yep. I have the table and all. And yeah, it's a great beginner router table for sure yeah. i know you built yours right yeah, i built mine um probably maybe should have just bought the insert for the saw the table saw because it takes up quite a bit of room but i do like that it gives me a lot of extra storage underneath because yeah. i have all those drawers and i keep all the router stuff in that cabinet so i can move it around the shop it rolls so mckenzie lumber mill says what is your best selling projects with the cnc Ooh, that's a good one you want to go first? You want me to? So ours would be the mallet templates that we sell on the website. And because that's just something we can batch out. And uh, I've got a video on how to make a mallet with that template. It's just our design that you actually helped me with. He helped me come up with the handle because mm -hmm. I couldn't figure out the little little finger holes. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he done it for me. He's like, send it back to yep. him. So, yep. you know, that's, that's probably our, yeah, that's probably our best seller. What about you? Yeah, for me, uh, so... Like Matt said, uh, I do a lot of wholesale work, um, and so well they didn't hear that. That was oh, on the members only. That's right. Yeah, I'm sorry about that's that. Right. So what, one of my business strategies is um, selling wholesale. Uh, so CNC has kind of two capabilities: um, replication or customization. So I lean heavily into the replication. Um, so I sell to um, some online um, businesses that have a have powerful brands that I don't have. And um, so a wooden cheese tray, um, there's a couple of videos on my channel of me making them uh, would be the top seller um, that I've made the most of and sold. So you have a video on making like a hundred of those in a certain amount of time. Yeah. So I have two videos, one making a hundred and then um, I've made them so much that I've refined the process that I made a second video yeah. of how I made a hundred faster. Yeah. So yeah. that's cool. Yep. That's one of the things really good at sling sawdust says, what's the cost of the Craig? Do you remember? Don't write Probably off. just Google it because prices yeah. have changed recently on a lot of stuff. Yes. So I would just Google Craig router table. You should be able to find it. Damon says, what is the difference between a CNC and a laser? What can you do with one that the other does not? That is a great question. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, a CNC router. Uh, so let's just talk um, entry level hobby machines like... Um, like we have, mm -hmm. they're considered hobby, but right. they're a little, there's hobby, industrial, RV, RV, ours are a hobby. Mm -hmm. So with those level machines, with lasers across the board, um, you can do a lot more um, cutting uh, deeper pockets than a laser can. You can't create a, it'd be hard to create a pocket with a laser. Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to engraving, like if you were gonna engrave a cutting board uh, a laser is actually really good for that. Mm -hmm. um, personalization, engraving, but cutting those machines really kind of struggle. Yeah, it's what they're, they usually cut no more than about a quarter inch thick. And then you have that burn look around the edge. And yeah. So if you want to cut things out or to make trays, things like that, CNC is the way to go. If you want to customize cutting boards with their people's last names or initials, then probably a, a laser. Yeah. Yep. And Ms. Stephanie says, does 731 have a Facebook community? We sure do. Facebook.com slash groups slash 731 Bullworks. And we accept friendly people. We don't want no negativity. And if you get negative, you get out of there. So we, we keep it really positive and, and encouraging to each other. And that's how we like to make it roll. 
Kent Owen says, is there anything in your shop, tools, mini split, et cetera, that you wish you had purchased sooner rather than later? Yes. For me, mini split, dust collector. You? I would say dust collector as well for me. Maybe I saw stop. Oh, you went there. <laughs> yeah, it's a dust collector, saw stop. If you um, don't know, Andy had an accident on the table saw before he got a table, uh, saw stop. He's got a video on that on his channel too, and it's pretty eye-opening. Yeah, honestly. yeah. Um, I was extremely blessed to keep my fingers, um, but uh, it happened fast. Uh, I wasn't being reckless. Mm -hmm. and um, Just more complacency. Complacency, comfortable with being, getting too comfortable with the tool, um, and listening to something that was distracting. I was okay. listening to a podcast through my, my headphones and just kind of wasn't present. Mm -hmm. And when you have a blade spinning 3,500 RPMs, that's not a good combination. No, it's not. No, I'm glad you wasn't hurt more seriously. Yes. Yeah, me too. Yes, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that you can, uh, you know, as much as we want to be present and we want to always pay attention every single person on earth as far as i know uh, at some point your mind drifts off because your mind's not on your task you're doing maybe it's something because you've cut it out 300 times and this is the 301st you know or you know, whatever it is you just kind of drift you know and and that's that's usually when those things happen it's very similar to i always reference police work because it's it's what i was done and so you, you do 400 traffic stops and they all go perfectly right and they call them routine traffic stops and you get into a routine and then that 401st things go bad and you weren't expecting it because you got used to being everything going right and so yeah, that's when it gets you yeah well great question uh i would say when it started with cnc cnc projects so um i, I guess one thing Mm -hmm. Matt, that I don't talk about enough is I did do other woodworking projects other than CNC when I got started. Um, I just take anything that came my way, yeah, really. I did too. And just to survive. Mm -hmm. um, but when it came to CNC, it was really, um, I started reaching out to Etsy shops that were already successful um, selling products. And um, I came across this one that sold customized soap dispensers. And I reached out to her and I said, hey, can I make a tray, a wooden tray, simple wooden tray that's customized for your soap bottles, dispensers? And I sold them to her. And I sold those things. That was when, that's when all this, this light bulb went off. Yeah. Um, so rather than trying to sell a tray on Etsy myself, I went to someone else that already was successful. Yeah. They've already got the traffic. They've already got the traffic. And it was an easy upsell. Yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rich, uh, Rich Enick says, would you, would the Harbor Freight two horsepower dust collector be good enough to start for $250? I'll let you take that one. Cause you have experience with Harbor Freight dust collector. In my opinion, one of the best values mm -hmm. on the market. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about that. One of the, that thing should be a thousand dollars. That's what you've got, right? Yeah. That's what I, exactly. You have what that I exact have. model? Exactly what I have. Uh, and it was a hand-me-down yeah. from someone else that had used it for i think this thing is going on like seven years really yeah so that's good stuff and it's still sucking because we get a lot of hate towards the harbor freight stuff yeah so yeah i mean you do and then you get some positive stuff so yeah. there's a mixed bag so it just depends on what you're buying there too mixed batches on mm -hmm. that so that's a yep. really good thing to know because there there are some really good things there yep uh, Michael Pine says, do you think that with a saw stop, you might be more complacent just knowing that you won't lop an arm off? You won't get complacent, complacent with that spinning blade there because I don't 110% trust that, that that machine's going to work like it's supposed to. I think it will, yeah. but I'm not sticking my finger in there to find out. Yeah. So what That's I would... mean. Yeah. What I don't think... Uh, it's still a power tool. Mm -hmm. uh, we sh should have the same respect for it, whether it has technology in it or not. With that being said, anything that can uh, be another barrier of protection between me and cutting my fingers off. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I realized, and this is kind of, it's easy to say when you haven't had your fingers cut, but that, uh, like I have numbness in my fingers mm -hmm. for the rest of my life. Like, so that one moment of complacency, like, you know. Yeah. Um, so the $2,500 is, is, uh, 
for another barrier protection is a no brainer. Yeah. Uh, it is. Daniel Meyer says, I noticed that most shows and I'm just as guilty of using a table saw without the guard. Why personally, I don't have a guard on mine either. It come with one. I never put it on and the Delta I had, I never put it on. And there's a reason why, because when you're making, which I make a lot of smaller cuts and when you get right next to that blade, it's in the way or it hangs or it doesn't do what it's supposed to. So when you get up next to the blade or the push stick, it's jammed up on a small, small piece. I like, so the gripper that I use all the time yep. to get those small strips, it will not work with the blade guard. So the blade guard actually causes more problems for me than the actual guard itself. Now, if you're cutting a lot of sheet goods, it's a great thing to have on there. But if you're cutting small pieces of hardwoods, then it's, to me, it's or it's in the way because the push sticks don't work with it. Yeah, I would agree. And, and then sleds. Like, sleds, yeah. Yep, table they saw don't sleds, which I use my table saw sled a lot. And I, I made one that has the handles on there. So I keep my hands back for the most part as, as much as I can. It's got clamping. So it's it's just, uh, that's why I don't use it. Uh, I don't know why anybody else don't, but that's me. Yep. Harbor Freight Dust Collector is on sale for two oh nine. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> A better deal getting, uh, getting better. A good deal getting better. Great Grandpa. He says, hey. I bought the small. I bought a small CNC because of this guy. Thanks, Mister Burr. Is still learning and having what I'm assuming is fun. That's awesome. That's really cool. Scruffy, Scruffy Santa says, Andy, do you have any thoughts on the smaller Harbor Freight dust collector? I have a small hobby shop and thinking about that one. And the smaller one. Scruffy Santa thinking about the smaller Harbor Freight dust collector. What do you think? I'm I'm not too familiar with it. But I'd probably compare the the one that's two oh nine right now to the one that that is on that you're talking about and see if they use like the same type motor or the same brand of motor. Of course, it won't pull as much airflow. And that's where a dust collector really shines. If it doesn't have enough CFMs, it's not pulling enough, then it's not going to perform as well. And but I would look and just see if both of them are made by the same people. If they're made by the same people, you can kind of start getting a little more confident and that it's going to be a decent tool. The one that I have is made by Central Machinery. Mm -hmm. They make a bunch of uh, stuff for Harbor yep. Freight. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, major kickbacks on table saws. And so that's one thing a saw stop can't prevent. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it still will kick back if you use it improperly. If something gets pinched or bound up, I mean, there's there's ways to help prevent that and offset that. But yeah, you're right. Jason Priestler said, "That's what I need." The gripper, as silly as it sounds, David it's hard Johnson to save the money to spend on that, even though, what? David Johnson wants me and you to switch out. <laughs> we can do it. <laughs> it won't cost more. Yeah, uh, they're like $65, Jason, but yeah, I understand, man. I, I've been there, and, and I know that sometimes, you know, 20 bucks is more than you can spend. I When I first started out, like, I had to borrow tools to start. And, uh, it just... Oh, I know. I know what they mean. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff R. says, anybody purchased the Nova King benchtop drill press? He has one coming. I saw a review on that on David, what's his name? Make something, David Picciuto. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a review on one. It was pretty good, but I haven't seen anybody else do one. I remember. So if anybody else has one, be glad to hear what you think of it. Okay. It's yeah. If you're looking for our PO box, it's PO box seven three one. Yep, right here. Evan Chisholm. It's PO box seven three one, Monticello, Arkansas seven one six five seven. Yep. Uh, favorite scents. Um, uh, well, she said AR. Yeah, AR. Monticello AR. Um, yeah. I don't. What's your favorite scents? When looking for other woodworkers to grow your skills, does it matter if you have different project styles like furniture versus custom closets? No, because you're going to learn something like Andy does more CNC, a lot more CNC stuff than I do. And like, I don't, I don't use it a whole lot at all. And so, and then like uh, Jeff already, I went down with him and he's using different tools and different techniques than I use like regularly. So you'll learn something yeah. from each other. 
just being able to see their workshop, their workflow, how they process things, how they think things out. Yeah, things look a lot different on camera. Well, also, when you get to a place, when yeah. I got to your shop, I was like, oh, that's there. Oh, that's there. <laughs> yeah. It, you know? Yeah, you get more perspective. And then you also, like on, on video, a 12 minute video, I'll give you a, a, what they call a big fat example. The, I, I did a. Oh, super chat. Thanks, Mr. Clark. Thank you, man. I was answering a question. He says, uh, do you have any thought on building a project together to celebrate Independence Day? I give your content careers this challenge. Uh, we didn't think about that, but that would have been a cool project. Uh, maybe something we can collab on next year. Well, yeah. This one may. I mean, it's... Come to think about it, our project... It ties in a little bit. It does. Yeah. It does. So, yeah, we may do it. Uh, I was back to that question. Yeah. So, so like, um, when I built the Meyer stand, it took me four and a half days, full days to build it from start to finish. And that's me sitting there looking at it, thinking about it and wondering if I should do this or do that. And then also it took me another 36 hours to edit the video. So you basically take 40 hours of work and compress it down into what? 12 minutes, 14 minutes. So there's a ton of stuff in there that doesn't make the video that would might would benefit somebody here or there, but I have to kind of think about the majority and keeping it short enough. People actually watch it. So there's a ton of, info there that you're losing if you're not actually here and working. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's always the hard part is what to leave in, what to leave out. Um, but a project like that, like no one wants to watch a 40 hour video. Right. Sorry, Matt. Well, no, they're not going to do it. They're not going to sit there. I've heard, I've had people tell me if I see the video is 15 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes, I don't even click on it. Yep. So everybody's busy, you know? Sean Gleason says, any thoughts on acrylic, acrylic templates and their high costs, such as wine glass holders, beer flight boards, et cetera? Talking about buying them from somewhere else. I think it's a great tool, uh, especially uh, you need a flush trim bit and a palm router mm -hmm. uh, to, and a jigsaw uh, to kind of make any of those products. So, um, And they're reusable. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a great way to get into different projects that you couldn't create otherwise. I know a lot of those templates can cost $65 or dollars or so for one template. But if you think about, if you say a wine glass holder, if you're going to make 20 of those either, even as gifts, like that's a very low cost gift. Exactly. Yep. Or if you're selling those and you can make, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, however many you can sell, then that $65 becomes negligible spread over that many projects. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so they are high. If you want to save some money and make your own templates, you can use MDF to do the same thing. Yeah. It's just the what I found is those acrylics you're able to see through them, and you can see better, mm. like where your router's going and things. So it makes it a little easier. But MDF templates work just as well. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to scroll back up. May I miss some? If you see one too, be feel free to jump in. Uh, McKenzie says, is your CNC a large income stream? For us, no, but I don't um, I don't use it a lot. But for you, maybe. Uh, for creating products, I would say currently right now, it, it went from 100% of my business down to probably 50% of my business currently right now um, as a revenue stream. So that's still a large chunk. Yeah, yeah. still a large chunk. Yep. So, yeah. Hey, Mary Man, what's up, man? Uh, they're talking among each other. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking, reading, I'm reading. <laughs> so, yeah, the the CNC business, I think, is uh, one of those things that a, a lot of people kind of overlook as a way to actually generate income. A lot of a lot of people, I think, look at it and think that it's it's a toy or it's a hobby which it can be, it can be just something you're messing with and trying to make stuff. But, you know, I think a lot of people miss, they, um, what do you call it? Underestimate it. Yeah. As how yeah. much money it can bring into your business. Like we were talking about today, um, 10 years ago, this technology wasn't affordable, mm -hmm. um, to people like you and me, it was in an industrial setting. And so the fact that we can have these tools in our shop mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, the income potential, like 
I guess the cost of the cost is significant. Don't don't get me wrong, um, but the potential there is is astronomical. It's yeah. it's really crazy the income potential. Okay. Yeah, we answered that one. <laughs> Ooh, here you go, Matt. How do you pronounce shape? <laughs> shape <laughs> o co. Shape o co. <laughs> shape o co. I say shapoko or shapako or shape echo. However, it comes out, but it's shape o co. That's how it is. <laughs> Uh uh. I'm working on my first project of replacing the tabletop on the back of each table. I'll have the first section done, still need to do the rest of the tabletop. Oh. Ronnie Wagner says, Hey, Andy, do you have a childhood hero? Oh, wow. That's a. <laughs> uh, I would, just off the top of my head, yep. putting me on the spot, uh, it'd probably be different if I thought about it for a <laughs> while, but I would say my grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was in construction, built houses by himself, mm. literally, like from the ground up. And he would build houses and sell them, and that's what he did. Yeah, that's cool. So uh, you kind of inherited some of that uh, maker skills or maker DNA. I did. I remember my first, I don't know if this was my first, but my main project, he lived on a big river, a large river. Mm -hmm. And I, he put a bunch of two-by-fours on the ground, a box of screws, and I went to town and I built this boat. And it was a one-time use boat. We went up, we went up river yeah. and just floated it down yeah. and it was gone forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Boo K says, do they make a starter setup CNC like an all in one kit? Well, that's where shape Oco really shines. And, uh, I'll, full disclosure, uh, I have been sponsored in the past by shape Oco and he is currently being sponsored by shape Oco. So take this with whatever grain of salt you need to. But yeah, they the the shape, that's one of the great things I like about Shape Oco is when you buy them, they come with everything you need to get started: the uh, clamping or the work hold down, dust collection attachments, uh, bits CNC or the router bits CNC bits end mills as they call them. Yep. Uh, like a variety of those. Um, I'm probably missing something. The work table itself uh, is part of the package because some CNCs don't come with that that table with the waste board on it and all that. Yep. I guess ready to go. The router comes with it. Right. And then training. Yeah. They have a training section on their website that uh, will allow you to learn how to use their equipment and use how to use the software. So th they're they're one of the ones that really shine in that department. Yep. In they, my opinion. I would agree. Um, the full kit. You don't have to source anything yourself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mr. Clark Duncan says, Andy, what is your opinion on having both the Chicago XXL, I think he meant Shipeco, mm -hmm. and an X tool laser or M1 or D1? Like a laser, both both CNC and laser. So I I think it's a great idea. The more tools you can have, the better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, well, uh, so I will say that um, you can get a laser attachment for your Shapeoko and uh, kind of a two-in-one tool. Mm -hmm. And that's appealing to a lot of people. But what I found, and I actually did a couple videos on this, um, is I like to have them separate. I like to have a laser and uh, a, a router. One, you can run them at the same time. Mm -hmm. Two, I don't want to constantly set up my router to be a CNC router and then mm -hmm. flip it to be a CNC laser. Um, so if you can have both, I think that's the best work. Probably space would be... What money but space too would be a concern there if yeah. you were trying to conserve space it may be something that you'd want to combine the two but if not then yeah when it comes to cost when it comes to cost space i think is probably the number one consideration when it comes to cost the kits that i know of for that attach to the shape Oco or cnc router um are more expensive really? than what you can get like the d1 for hmm. that's yeah. interesting Jeff Alvarez says, working together is fun, especially the part when party A leaves party B to sand. I left just in time. <laughs> huh? That's awesome. 
Navy Davies says, aside from using the CNC to make a personalized item you're working on, do you do much work customizing items for customers as a source of income, like rifle stocks, uh, pre-bought cutting boards, etc.? I haven't, but I know that a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Chevalier says, do you, uh, have you used a Onefinity CNC? And if so, what are your thoughts? So I've got a good friend that has a Onefinity uh, I went over one afternoon and watched him run it, um, and I and I was really impressed. Um, I would say the uh, One Finity um, is a great, is honestly, is a great machine. I don't think you can go wrong with it. Um, you do have to source some things that you don't get with the kit uh, that they send, but uh, it's a very capable machine. Uh, Mr. Gleason, uh, he wants a. A link for the CNC. Go to carbide3d.com. That's who sells them, carbide3d, if you want to look at them. Uh, is there a market for making custom picture frames? Maybe. Uh, I would think it would be fairly small. I, I'm not in that niche, though. So I, those things are more worth than you think. To get them, to get them correct. Yeah. You, if you get you a jig set up, you can make them pretty easy. I think uh, actually make something. David Pesciuto has a video on making a... Um, picture frame jig to make them faster yeah so success is determined by so selling anything mm -hmm. uh, you can take any example any product um for example is all about getting it in front of your customer so you have to think about where people are that are looking to buy custom picture frames or customized picture frames mm -hmm. and if you can find go to those people yeah then there's a market right but you just have to find it Chris Brown says, what planning software? Uh-oh, we forgot something. <laughs> it's power tip time. Again, that's two weeks in a row. That's two weeks in a row. Wow. Wow. <laughs> All right. We're going to put Andy on the spot. Let him give us a power tip. Power tip time. Power tip time. Uh, so I, I think we're going to get into discussing this a little bit. Okay. But my power tip is is about working with other people and i think the uh i think this is over the importance of this is so overlooked like there's obviously uh, an underlying like benefit of of collaborating and working right. together and learning but i think uh i was telling you today about uh, the book that i listened to on the way down here um a book by chip Gaines. um no, no pain, pain no, no gains, gains. <laughs> Uh, and it's, it's literally all about making connections and it was a great listen. Um, and he really hints on, um, when you're building a network, you're not, so here's my power tip. That was all prefaced. <laughs> uh, when you're building, so, when you're building a network, uh, it is about genuine connections, right? It's not about, Hey, what can you do for me? Mm -hmm. Or, Hey, what can I get from this person? Uh, it is about connecting on a human level we're all humans and uh building a genuine network that is there for you um in many different ways um, and you're also there for them and so the power tip is build genuine connections and whatever you're doing um, seek people out and look at the human not just at what is this in for me but um i think we're really uh, it's easy to un humanize somebody yeah um but build genuine connections that's a good one that's good ken owen says i'm not sponsored by shape oko in any way i wish but they have an amazing customer service if you have any issues i agree with that and so i've contacted them and they uh had no clue who i was when i was contacting them like the the, the customer support side has doesn't know the people i'm talking to they know each other probably but they're not like hey this dude's on the phone so I, I had a router go bad. I burned it up because I was running it way too high. I was talking about earlier. I had it on full blast the whole time. And so I contacted them. They overnighted me a new one because it had only been like six months or something. And they overnighted me a new one. Like I had it the next day. So like, they were really good. I also jumped on a call with them on, a, on an issue I thought I was having. And they walked me through it on a video call. So it was like they've been good to me. Uh, David Baraggio says, uh, what is the best advice do y'all have for someone that is considering moving woodworking from a hobby to a business? We talked about that today too. Remember that? We did. Home? We did. That's so when we went to lunch together and had the discussion on the way back. Uh, basically, have a plan. 
you know, that's kind of he he talked about he and his wife set up a plan. He wound up having to sell his truck or oh. made the decision to sell his truck. I did to offset the cost. Hold on, let me finish this question. To offset the cost of um, the the well the the financial burden, you you basically yeah. relieved yourself of a financial burden, and y'all set yourself up so that you could go full time. And my wife and I did the same thing uh, when I was taking the leap, and uh, we started planning ahead of time and started putting money back into so that we could have a little bit of a cushion there in case things didn't go quite as planned, and so that we would have a little little cushion. So that's my advice. Yeah, mine is the same way. Have a plan. Um, I don't. I can't think of any scenario where um, uh, you have to build an audience and you have to build a customer base, whatever you're doing, and that doesn't happen overnight. So start way before <laughs> you actually uh, want to make that transition and um, be intentional with it. Um, so working towards something. I think when you're building that business, at, there's a point in time when you're going to be so busy that you can see the potential. You can say, well, if I stop and went full-time business now, then I could double this business because I would have that X number of time or, you know what I mean? Because that's the amount of hours you're working at work mm -hmm. versus, so I think that's. All right, Miss 731 is going to drop those states. She ain't getting on camera. She's yep. There we go. Wisconsin, Kansas, Kentucky, Argentina, Missouri, Texas, South Carolina, North Carolina, Alabama, Michigan, Arizona, Tennessee, Iowa, Maine, Idaho, Louisiana, South Dakota, North Dakota, Ohio, Canada, A, eh? Florida, Vermont, California, Minnesota, Colorado, Georgia, Delaware, Illinois, Virginia, West Virginia, Newfoundland, Arkansas, Rhode Island, Michigan, Maryland, Arizona, and New Jersey. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was Miss 731, everyone. <laughs> Rick Enoch said, would you recommend if you get a CNC to enclose it in a box to cut down on the noise? Yes. <laughs> yes, he would. <laughs> yes. So it's a significant reduction in noise? It is. It is. Uh, that was one of my goals uh, when we had our, our, our son um, uh, was before – we had a baby in the house. I, I didn't really care all that much. Mm -hmm. I, my my uh, shop is in the basement, so you could hear it all the way upstairs. So I put it in a box because babies need to take naps. Yeah. And it drastically really? reduced it. Yeah. That's cool. Well, I, I built, built an, an enclosure. enclosure. Yeah. Not like a cardboard box. Yep. Well, it has... Uh, windows on it right where you see uh, in the front yeah. yeah yeah so it has doors and yep yep i should build a double decker box yeah you got two of them yeah david takes says andy with the wholesale work you've done do you ever feel like you're taking a cut in pay versus doing retail work so basically i guess selling it yourself versus mm -hmm. i mean there's obviously a trade-off there but like you said earlier getting in front of an audience is two different stories. Yeah. So, um, I, when I was at the golf course, I told Matt a story earlier. Um, and I was in the barn by myself. <laughs> I had a lot of time to think about this. Um, and anyways, I had a lot of time alone uh, to think about this. Uh, bef when I was uh, going through this process about three and a half years ago and I started thinking, think how, so as consumers, we only think about retail, like we purchase retail, mm -hmm. but do you know how many companies have touched that product before it gets to you? Like so many companies, yeah. so no matter what we purchase, there's only one end seller and everybody is getting their cut along the way. Mm -hmm. So, um, wholesale is, uh, uh, you know, you're the middleman and, um, I don't have a problem with that because I have access to their their customers. Right. That it would take me years to build on my own. Yeah. I mean, it takes a long time. Yep. doesn't matter if you're – anywhere you're selling online, whether you get your own website going, sell on Etsy, sell locally, like to build a customer base takes time. It does. Now, with that being said, I do have a strategy of building a customer base for myself mm -hmm. um, along with the wholesale stuff. So, Yeah, it's more like diversifying. Yeah. Marion, thank you, Marion, for being a woman's six supporter for six months. Hey, mm -hmm. 
Uh, Bryce Boyd says, uh, you just recently got a Laguna CNC. What would be the recommendation for getting the word out about the CNC? I guess about his uh, about products. Make, about making things, yeah. Um, so a lot of videos about this on my channel. Uh, and the a couple off the top of my head things that I would say to do is uh, start creating things that you are interested in and um, start documenting them. Start taking pictures of them and posting them. Um, whether on Facebook or Instagram and it's not for likes, it's not for anything other than to build a portfolio mm -hmm. because um, if you just build things in your basement and uh, which is, we, we both do that or in our garage um, and you don't take pictures of them when someone says, Hey, what do you do? You, you don't have anything to show them. Yeah. Uh, so build things, you start making things you like and that you're interested in yourself, build a portfolio and then show those things to the people that also like those things. Cool. It's good stuff. I'm looking for uh, Marion's comment, but uh, hi, uh, I can't see it. Welcome to Dan Myers. Mm -hmm. Take a super chat. My, my wheel's not scrolling here. Stand by. There we go. Super Thank chat. you, Karen. 56 year old female just started woodworking seriously about a year ago and wanted to thank you for all the videos that you've taught me so much. One question I'd like to ask is there a company that makes tools for lefties? Some things are left. So even table saws have a, like you can get a right tilt or a left tilt uh, mm -hmm. table saw. So you, and the fence would be vice versa. So yeah, there's some that are left handed, but for the most part, I would think most tools are not. I don't know. You know anything? I don't. I can't add anything to this. That's a great question. Yeah. I, I, I like for like drills and drivers, like they're, they're ambidextrous, I would assume. Um, I think there is such a thing as a left-handed tape measure. Yep. Is there? Yep. I believe so. Yeah. There has to be a left-handed tape measure because yep. everybody's clips on the right. Yep. So but you, it's the way you pull it and right. read it. You're pulling it out from in front. Yep. Yeah. There's got to be a left-handed one. Yep. But I know the table saw is. Anything else, I'm not sure. Uh, Chris Genesi, what a good question, or what is a good table saw to start off with? Uh, the safest one you can afford. If you can get a saw stop, I'm going to recommend that. He's going to recommend that. <laughs> um, but I couldn't when I started, so I got a Delta three. It was thirty seven six two five something like that. Anyway, Rigid makes it now. It's an orange, but it's the same as the old Delta was, and they sell them on Home Depot. They're like six forty nine, and that. <laughs> but there may be, um, that may be a barrier of entry that you're not willing to step up to yet. Like that's yep. expensive. And I know a lot of the job site saws, you can get those for around three, three to 400. Really. When you start getting under that price, you're getting into some, you're not going to be happy with it because the fence is not going to stay square. You're going to get some kickbacks and it's just, I've not had good experience with those cheaper saws. Yeah. I started with a rigid, I don't remember the model but uh, from Home Depot, mm -hmm. and it was like a three forty nine. Yeah, um, that's what I had my accident on. Um, but I used that for a year and a half. So um, is that the one that has the the cast iron top or in the in the base, or is it the smaller one like a job site? Style? It's the smaller job site one. Okay. Yep. A circular saw can be left-handed, so we got a we, we got a fast cap makes a left-handed saw. Uh, pencils are also left-handed, according to uh, who is that Damon? Damon. Damon. <laughs> pencils are left-handed, but uh, yeah, there's there's several left-handed tools out there. Stay stay from I'm assuming stay away from Ryobi for table saws. I've not used theirs, but I would I would probably not. I don't have any experience with them, so it's probably bad for me to say this, but I wouldn't. Personally, I wouldn't choose a Ryobi table saw. I would probably, if I'm looking for a job site saw, probably I would probably pick up the Dewalt. Skill makes some decent stuff, but I don't know. For me, I like the the reason I like the Dewalt job site saw is because it has that rack and pinion fence. So in other words, gear driven. So mm. both sides are going to stay perfectly square. Yeah. Where most of them just slide and have a little basically a um, tension that pulls it. Yeah. That thing doesn't never stay square. So when you get that rack and pinion, it it's very difficult for it to come out of square once you square it up. Yeah. But you're going to be like, that's, that's what I would pick. 
I always tell people go to three by three customs wood uh, channel and see whatever table saw she's using. Cause it's a job site. saw. she hasn't has a video on the saw saying they can find furniture from a job site. I saw. believe she has the dual. So it's yeah. it, whatever model that is, I would probably look at that. Yeah. So one thing I would comment on, and I know we look at price a lot, um, but going making the jump from a job site saw, which is a, a fine place to mm-hmm. start, um, there is a significant difference from a job site saw to even a, a cast iron top. Mm-hmm. Like the stability, it blew my mind, um, and the how less noisy it is. Yeah, they and, run it smoother. Uh, it just feels safer, mm-hmm. um, more stable. I had yeah. the Delta and it has the cast iron top and that served me very well for several years. And I passed it on to somebody else when I got the saw stop and it was still work. It worked really well. Mm-hmm. Like the, the fence system on that. And now the ridges is making that same model. And, but the fence for the price for the mid $600 for the price of what you're getting in that saw, mm-hmm. it's an extremely good value mm-hmm. in my opinion. Personally, PLC woodwork says question a store wants to sell my sofa tables, but want me to rent the space. Would it be more beneficial to rent the space per month or to have them take a portion of the sale? So they push your work. Just it probably just depends on how much percentage you're wanting to take and what the, what the uh, rent is. I mean, that would have to, I would have to know that before I gave you my opinion on it. Yeah, I agree. Need a couple more details. What's your favorite way to find other woodworkers to collaborate with who are local to you? Um, Check out, I mean, like, if you have a woodworking store or a lumber store or something like that, if you spend any time in there, just start talking to people. Like when I was in Woodcraft, uh, Woodcraft is uh, where well, there's not one anywhere near. So I had to fly to get there. But I was in Woodcraft and met a bunch of people that were woodworkers that were just in there buying tools or buying wood or whatever and just talk to them, you know, and, yeah. and you could just, that's how I would probably do it. If you have a, a store where local woodworkers go to buy things yeah, or clubs or groups, I, yeah, I would say social, social media uh, is a great tool, and that can be Facebook, that can be Instagram, that can be YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, one kind of trick that I have is uh, hashtags. You can search has- hashtags on mm-hmm. Facebook and Instagram, and uh, like local to your area. Yeah, like I can That's do good. hashtag Kentucky Woodworking, and then all the people that use that, I I can see them. Yeah. So huh, that's interesting. Yeah. What do you think about the skill 10 inch job site saw? So the skill I think is a few years ago, two, three years ago, they come out with a different, um, they come out with new models, a new models, of table saws. And I, that was when I was fixing to buy a new saw and I was watching those videos. It's been, it's probably been more than that now, probably three years ago. And I was watching those videos and I was impressed with those things. Really? Like the skill was mad. Like they were cutting, they were comparing those skills to the DeWalt's and other things. There's videos on YouTube. Go watch them on just skill versus DeWalt table saw. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Like they, they're really impressive. They, they actually did impress me. So you may find a, a good one there. Uh, duh, duh. Okay, My, they're all saying now that uh, three by three is going to a saw stop. She still has tons of videos showing using the job site, so go check those out. And the video she talked about, um, where she's making stuff with the, the saw stop, it's just fantastic work with that mm-hmm. with that saw too. Fantastic yep. work. What's the best way to work with olive wood? If epoxy is used when it Ooh. is not dry, will it still crack later? I don't know. I've never used olive wood. Uh, my guess is yes, and I'm only basing that on any wood that's wet is mm. going to warp and move when it dries, whether you epoxy it or not. Yeah, it's always good to make sure it's dry before you use it, because yeah. if not, you're going to have trouble. Yep. Yeah. Oh, what happened? We swapped cameras for some reason. I don't know what happened. Huh? Is this camera dead or something? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Is this camera dead? Is it off? Yep. I wonder what happened. Oh, well. I may have kicked you or something. What'd you do? We'll, we'll work with this one. I don't care. I got that. We're, We're flexible. Yeah. <laughs> got this will, you be, will you be pulling brag projects from Discord as well when you start showing them on your start of your live streams? Uh, 
Have you, have you set up a brag project yet? The brag uh, project? You messaged me today about what to do. Yeah. This camera? No, this one. The main camera, right? I know, but this is the one I'm recording you guys now. No, it ain't. It's my, my laptop camera. Oh, okay. I don't know what happened to the other one. It just went away. Well, y'all look weird now. Well, that's all right. I mean, I'm used to looking weird. You don't look weird. It's just the angle. <laughs> Uh, Alien Leader, she's going to set up a way to submit your projects for the brag board. In other words, you're going to be able to... Information from Mary Man, right as the show Yeah, started. so she's working on that. She'll be working on it this week. It's taken a couple of weeks. <laughs> she's had a lot of stuff. We were traveling this weekend and stuff. So she's going to set that up, and there'll be a way to submit it. Email is what he said. Yeah. We're probably going to take emails, and we'll set up an email to submit those to. That'd probably be the best way. Clark says, Andy, do you use both the laser and a CNC for your work? Oh, James Peach does it? Is that what Damon is saying? I don't know. I do. I use both. So you using the laser for um, yes, like, so like said, more engraving and things? Nose yeah. Hair. My nose hair? Yeah, someone said your beard looks good. Thank you. Uh, but I do. It's uh, a little scruffly right now. I got to like talk like this so you can see me on Is camera. It? <laughs> uh, but I do. Uh, so actually, my I haven't talked a lot about this, but my wife um, is involved in the business as well. Um, she's also a teacher, but um, she uses our laser a lot more than I do. Mm -hmm. And she creates products herself really? and sells them on Etsy. That's cool. Uh, it's kind it's kind of separate from yeah. what I do, but it's the same. Yeah. Um, so that's good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, she uses the laser to cut wood, uh, to engrave. Mm -hmm. And I use it if a customer, just to have the capability to engrave if yeah. I need to. That's awesome. Yep. Todd says, Todd Solisokowski, sorry, man. Woodcraft is expensive, but they have, they have stuff other stores don't. So this is my experience of my world traveling to Dallas, Texas and visiting Rockler and Woodcraft uh, one after the world other. Traveling. World traveling. This is what happened to me. So I go into Rockler and I had a question about the Festival Capex because I'd been looking at that. I was kind of him hauling around about the miter saw, the Makita that I bought. And I asked questions specifically about the uh, Makita or for the, the Festival. And they're like, I don't know. It's just over there. We use it to cut wood. I'm like, okay. And they didn't have, they couldn't tell me anything about it. I go to Woodcraft and was there for a few hours and they could tell me every single thing, every question I had plus more. Uh, the tool knowledge of the staff was night and day. Now, I don't know if that's just that store, uh, all stores, but that was my experience. And then we didn't just talk about Festival. We went through all kinds, like drill presses. We had questions about the jet drill presses, mobile bases, because the wind mobile base on my Rikon bandsaw is failing me. And so I'm like, I got to do something else. So they were talking to me about mobile bases. They knew their stuff, like the back of their hand. And I was very impressed by that. So that's my experience with that. Uh, and, Shout out to Pam. Wait, that's Daniel again, isn't it? I don't know. Da Damon says, if you were going to personalize Daniel ceramic Daniel towel for Daniel coasters, Daniel. would you use a CNC or a laser? Personalized co uh, oh, ceramic towel. tile. I, have um, uh, sh I would not use a CNC router. Would a, uh, would a laser work on that? Um, yeah, I'm getting to it. I'm not sure. Uh, I've never, I, I can't speak on ceramic tile. Um, I think, I think we need to test that out. Yeah. And, there you and go. Figure it out. There you go. There's yep. your video. Yep. Andy, what is the most difficult project you've done? Um, the difficult, most difficult project, I would say, uh, I built this headboard. I uh, made a video out of it in January, built this headboard for our, um, in my wife's bedroom. Mm -hmm. And I used the, uh, my Shape Oco CNC. And, um, but it, it's, it was too big. I mean, a headboard has to be bigger than 30 by 30. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I had to tile it. I had to make it in three sections oh. and, but it's, it's three sections wide but it's also four sections deep. I layered everything together. Oh yeah. So it was That's like, a lot of work. What's that math? 
Where's our math teachers at? <laughs> Not in here. It's like <laughs> 16 different individual cuts. So. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Santa. Appreciate that. Yeah, I, I was just generally impressed by Woodcraft. I'm making a video, and so the premise of the video is the first time I've ever been to Woodcraft. What's it like? Because I know a lot of people don't have access to Woodcraft, and I just thought it was kind of cool. It's like a, a kid going to the toy, uh, well, the Toys R Us, it used to be. So it's, it's like a toy store for woodworkers. They have everything you need. Going to a salada? Yeah, it's like my wife going to a salad bar. Salada. Salada. <laughs> she loves salada. There's a restaurant in Dallas named Salada. All they have salads. But they, um, so that was just, I was impressed by their tool knowledge. And I was also very impressed. There's a classroom inside the, the building and it has a full shop in there that they're teaching people to woodwork safely. And so I, th I was just impressed by their knowledge. The The staff was overly friendly and just, just good, good time. And I liked it. Elliot says, hey, it's Andy Bird. I love your channel. Someday I'll have to see you too. Thank you for the content. Bye. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Who said that? Facebook. Jason Elliott. Oh, yeah. Jason Elliott says, hey, it's Andy Bird. Hey, it's Andy Bird. I love your channel. Someday I'll have a CNC. Thank you for your content you provide on CNC. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Jason. All right. Uh, Damon, or Clark, I'm sorry, says, Amy and Matt spend too much money when he went to Woodcraft. <laughs> no, I actually didn't buy anything in the store at all. So, uh, Mr. Clark. <laughs> she was shopping, but I was I, I was just kind of window shopping. But I did I did wind up um, buying a different miter saw uh, based on their um, their demoing of the product, telling me about it, and just being able to put your hands on it. That's huge. I mean, I wish I had something so close to me that you could just walk into the store and lay hands on it. You know, just be able to see if it's good. You know, thank you, Greg. So, great grandpa commented on my Johnny Depp coasters a little while ago. Yeah. I did a test with the cheapest CNC router on Amazon, mm -hmm. and I made some Johnny Depp coasters. That's cool. And sent them. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Mr. Great Grandpa got them? Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Damon, one before supporter for 16 months. Thank you, Damon. Super. Super. I clicked the wrong button. I pushed the button. He said it's been another great live episode. Sorry about the camera issues. I'm not real sure why that one crashed. It may be because I didn't swap batteries before the show, but I have it charging, so it should be should have been good. Oh, well, it happens. Yeah, if you want to check out Andy's channel, tons and tons of videos about CNC, how to make money with it, projects you can make with it, projects that sell, uh, all kinds of uh, really good videos, uh, instructional videos, how to program, how to or, you know do use the software. Uh, I'll put his... Um, URL on the screen here, but there's also a link in the description. You just go click it and go check him out and uh, subscribe to his channel and, and start watching his stuff because he's making some good stuff and he's got some good stuff coming. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Give him some love. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, Chris. Read that. Girl, I can't find it. All right. Huh? I did. I put it on the screen several times. <laughs> oh, there you go. Make sure you give Andy Burr some love. <laughs> you don't got tickled over there, or what? <laughs> what are some of the woodworkers uh, you both look up to? Um, man, so probably the the guys that I watched a lot starting out. Jay Bates is probably the main one. Mm -hmm. He's the reason I started woodworking. And uh, I just was, whatever reason, sat down and watched one of his videos one day and the next day bought the stuff and bought the, or maybe in that day, I don't remember. That day or the next day, he bought the stuff and built his his chairs he has free plans for. So I would probably, that's probably who I'd say because that's really who, who inspired me to get started. There's so many. Grandpa's there's, one of them. There's so many. Grandpa's one of them. Um, but I'm going to throw one out there. Um, uh, April Wilkerson. Oh, yeah. Uh, she has I, a lot of good content. Too. She has fantastic content, and uh, she may be one of the hardest working people I know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. That's cool. Read most comments. I look up to every any woodworker I meet, side effects of being five foot. <laughs> I'm not giving you the one because you're not five foot one. 
<laughs> Where do you get your t-shirts from? 99% of my shirts, unless you're talking about his, his is Under Armour. So I'm, I, don't I, don't, where I don't know where I got this. 99% of my shirts come from Caruso, which is K-E-R-U-S-S-O.com. They're also an Arkansas-based company, which is awesome, and I didn't know that until just a little while ago. That's cool. And then Mardell.com, M-A-R-D-E-L.com. And then we have a few uh, Christian-based shirts on our website, 731Worth.com. I need to give me some of those t-shirts. I mean, I don't need to give <laughs> give Under Armour any more ad time. Clark says the camaraderie and complete ethical nature of 731 Live Edge Show and Andy Birdfield's show are fantastic, and they are really uh, do show ethical and moral Christian value while working in business. Thank you. <laughs> well. Our program director lets us know that that is a wrap. We thank Andy Burge for showing up and uh, my beautiful wife behind the scenes running things tonight. So really thank you guys for uh, uh, joining us tonight and greatly appreciate Andy for coming back uh, yeah. and joining us on thank live. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, honestly, thank you. Uh, it was a great time. So Yeah, have a good night.